Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Woohoo! All right. I'm excited to be here. Hello, everybody. Hello. Well, this is fun. I walked in and I thought, man, this is, uh, we got some energy going in here. Yeah. I love it. So all of Fredericksburg that has not heard me speak, raise your hand. Okay, let's give them a hand. All of Fredericksburg. Yeah, we love Fredericksburg. Yes. Well, I, I'm thrilled to be here for the, is this the first meeting for everybody? Yes. Oh, that, this is an honor. Thank you. Thank you. This is an honor. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, today we're going to talk about something really fun and engaging. It's called responsibility. <laughs> I, told, I told Cynthia about my class and she goes, can, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Like, <laughs> what, what is this really going to be about, Tomas? And so I, I promise you that, that this will be a class that I think, you know, I, I've shared it multiple times and I really feel like it's, it's, it's a perfect lesson as you guys are coming together. It's the perfect timing and, and I'm excited. So the idea is that, you know, responsibility is the pathway to meaning. And now, so that you know a little bit about me, you need to know that, that I'm a former third grade teacher. So I, so I, have, I have handouts. They will be graded. I'm just letting you know that right now. I've got my red pen in my bag. They will be graded. And so I'll have some people help me just kind of throw these down that way. And I feel like I'm, I'm back in my teaching days. This, this feels really fun right here. Pass those down. All right. I'll let you pass those to the back. And then you could just pass those down here and then give those to the next row right there. Okay, so how did I get to this moment right here? Well, number one, you have to know that I have some amazing parents, obviously, right? My mom and dad are amazing. But I will tell you, the, the, probably the, the uh, next most amazing person in my life is my wife, Christina. Now, you, uh, they did not mention that we are going to be coming uh, for the retreat, but guess what? My wife will be speaking at the retreat. And I need you to know she's better than me, okay? My wife is so much better than I am. I, like when people say it's my better half, it's the truth. Like my wife is amazing. Now, have you heard of uh, Mary, uh, Mary Kondo, uh, the Spark of Joy, Spark Joy uh, organization in Netflix? My wife has been through the certification for the second time. So we're going to be talking about what sparks joy in your life for the retreat. And it's a class that I'm so excited because I get to assist her in this class. But really, I just get to watch her and be awesome. So I'm, I'm really pumped. Um, so knowing that my wife is awesome and that you're going to get to meet her, you need to understand that is a big portion of why Luxury Home Magazine came to exist. Because my wife said to me one day, we need a magazine and we need, it, we need to start something in San Antonio and it needs to be high end and it needs to be luxury. I said, babe, that sounds awesome. How do we do that? She goes, I don't know. We got to figure it out. So we went on a cruise. We, uh, my son at the time was very little. And remember your napping schedules? Right when you have a little 18 months old, we would keep him on his schedule. And while we were in the cabin, she came up with the idea for a really high end publication just for real estate. And I said, Wow, let's do it. We get back home. This was in 2010. We did one search Luxury Home Magazine. That was the name that we thought would work. It already existed. We were scared. We were like, You know, because when something already exists, what do you think? Someone's already got it. There's no way you're going to get it. Well, guess what? No one had that San Antonio Luxury Home Magazine at the time, the franchise. So we started the first franchise in San Antonio um, and, uh, for Luxury Home Magazine. And then in 2000, and that was in 2011. 2013, we took it to Austin and we started Austin Luxury Home Magazine. And so fast forward to today, uh, we have those two publications. My wife and I own Spanish Grove Academy. We ended up buying a school. How do you do that? It's a pre-K academy, and it's Spanish immersion in Stone Oak. It's right in the heart of Stone Oak. So my wife and I divide and conquer. It's like she does the school, 
which that's what my, all my education is. She always laughs. She's like, you're supposed to be at the school. Why am I there? And uh, I said, no, baby, you're in the perfect spot because there is no way that I could run 30, uh, the 30 people that you have at your, you know, at the school. You're doing a great job. And so I started my speaking um, uh, at, you know, right around the time that I started the magazine because I love training. I love teaching. I love this idea. And so today, I want to make sure you understand that I'm coming to you from a point with this speech, uh, this, this class, from a perspective of this is something that I am still working on, right? A lot of times you'll have speakers come in and they'll be like, you got to do this and you got to do that. And uh, guess what, guys? I'm still working on this, right? Responsibility is hard, right? Understanding responsibility is not easy. And what we're going to talk about today, it's, it's not that it's challenging, but it's going to make you think a little bit. But what my hope is, is that at the end of it, you look at responsibility in the way that I've come to look at it, giving you meaning. So how did this come about? <clears throat> Has anybody heard of this book, The 12 Rules for Life? Okay, a few of you, Jordan Peterson, anybody heard of that name, Jordan Peterson? Okay, so let me tell you what happened to me. I was at a friend's house and I was given a book. Anybody here been given a book? right? Now, be honest. How many of you have been given a book that you've never read? <laughs> so, so this is what I thought was going to happen with this book. This book is a monster. I mean, it's thick. It's, it's, very, it's very meaty. He is a, uh, uh, a professor and a, sci- uh, a psychologist um, up in Toronto area. And his books, he, it's almost like every chapter, he's, it's a lecture style, but it's really, really good stuff. And so I'm reading this book and I'm just, I'm sitting in, uh, we were at the, uh, if you've ever done a staycation, a great spot to do it is at La Quintera, the resort. Okay, great spot for your kids, for your family. So I'm reading this book. I take a picture of it on Instagram, power of Instagram. I post it. Well, a buddy of mine calls me and he says, hey, um, did you know Jordan Peterson was going to be in San Antonio? I'm like, whoa, what, what do you mean he's going to be in San Antonio? He's going to be at the Tobin Center and I have box seats. Would you like to join me? Uh, yes and yes, right? <laughs> I will be there. But here I said, here's the problem. I said, someone gave me this book and it's a friend. And if I go with you and I don't bring him, because I wouldn't even know who Jordan Peterson was if, you know, he hadn't given me the book. So I said, here's the deal. Don't give me two tickets. I will buy my tickets. Give your tickets to someone else. He goes, I've got two tickets for you. Just be there. Okay, mind blown, right? Like, this is wild. Now, how many authors do you think are selling out the Tobin Center? You think a lot of authors are still it? He sold it out, okay? Completely sold out, completely booked. This place was packed and it was jammed with energy. And he starts off with what we're going to talk about today. Here are his 12 rules for life. But he says, today we're going to talk about the 13th rule. And the 13th rule is that responsibility is the pathway to meaning. And on your notes, you can, some of you are already filling it in right there. Gold sticker. Got it. She's already ready. I love it. Responsibility on your little note sheet at the very top is a pathway to meaning. So he opens up. I'm sitting in the stands and I'm just, I feel like I'm in a, like this lecture, but I'm just like, I, 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 I'm, I'm blown away because of the way he's speaking. And he starts off by saying responsibility is a pathway to meaning. And I was like, whoa, okay, this is deep. And I started sitting there thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, what I started thinking, how does that, what does that mean to me? How does that relate to my life? And as we go through our time together today, you're going to see that there are so many ways that this connects to life as a realtor, life as family, life as a, a mother, life as a father, life as grandparents. There's so many ways that this responsibility connects. And my buddy who came with me, he, we were walking out of the uh, 
Tobin Center and he looked at me and he goes, man, I got the best deal. I gave you a book that I got for free and I end up getting to see <laughs> Jordan Peterson at the Tobin Center. And I said, yeah, I said, listen, we both lucked out. Like this was an amazing opportunity. But responsibility is a pathway to meaning. And so let's go back because I think it's important to have some context to the idea of responsibility. So I wanna go back. Will you go back with me a little bit? Just go back. This was, I love this photo. This was a photo shoot that we did with my uh, father. And uh, so this is young Tomas, okay? Now, now, I've got some young photos of you. You don't know it yet, but I, I, I pulled out some young photos. Tony gave me the Dropbox, all right? And some of you are gonna be outed here in a minute, all right? But here's what I want you to think about. At the very bottom of your page, you see the little kid running, right? And then you see the kind of the um, future person there. What I want you to think about is this, is, is remember when you were young, what, what were the responsibilities that we had when we were young? Let's say it out loud, let's work with me here. What, what were the responsibilities? Feed, Feed the dog, I love that. School. School. Who said what? Take Clean your room, take a bath, please. <laughs> like, what? I, I just, I look at my son and I'm like, really, really? <laughs> right, what else? What were the other responsibilities? Trash, Trash. I like, that's a good one. Mow the, lawn. Mow the lawn, yes, yes. Anything else that comes to mind? Get a job. Take care of what? Yeah, take care of your parents. Now. Can we agree, right, this is young self. Now, I don't want to leave anybody out here because some of y'all, I got a picture. And, and I, I, I said, listen, I don't want to call anybody out. His head's turned. We got him right here. He's in the room right now, but we don't want to say who it is, all right? We don't want to say who it is, right? <laughs> now, as we get a little bit older, right, responsibility for how we look, kind of, we just lose that, right, completely. If you remember these pants, we, these were the jams, uh, if you remember those, right? But I don't want to leave out the ladies, because I got a picture of you too, all right? We all remember this, okay? Raise your hand if you still have a jean jacket. Anybody still got a jean jacket? All right, I love it. Being honest, I love it. So, is it coming back? Isn't the jean jacket coming back? It's hilarious. Yeah. So would you say it never left? <laughs> Love it. Now, anybody ever heard this? I, I, have, I have something that I, 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 I'm hoping by the end of today that this statement will mean something different for you. Right? Now, we hear, when we see our kids say this statement, we kind of get a little nervous. Right? We're like, oh, no, 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 no YOLO for you. No, no, no YOLO for you. Right? Um, you only live once, yes, but it might not work out, right? Like, just, but I want you to just have this. If you've never heard this, just, just write this down in your notes. YOLO, you only live once. Because here's the deal. I want to flip this for all of us at the end of this presentation. I really want to flip that idea for you at the end of this presentation. So young you, responsibility high or low? No. Low. low. Can we all agree, right? It's low, right? And I, I remember I, I was teaching this class and, and one person literally said, like, what feeling do you have? And they're like, freedom. <laughs> they were like, it's just, I was just free. I could do whatever I want, right? Then as we get older, what can we say about responsibility? <laughs> Who, what, what was that? <laughs> It's, <laughs> does, does someone say exhausting? I, I thought I heard exhausting. I thought I heard that, right? Mm. As we get a little older, right, it, 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 it starts to compound, right? It doesn't just, it's not by adding. It's like we multiply this responsibility, right? And so what I want you to do for me right now is you've got an area, and I want you to take about a minute, just a minute, and I want you to think about everything you're responsible for, okay? And I mean charity, uh, a family, maybe it's, it's uh, grandchildren, everything that you're responsible for, all right? You only gave us one paper. One? Oh. 
You only got a minute. You only got a minute. You only got a minute. Now think in terms of work. Think in terms of everything. Does everybody, everybody know what we're doing, right? You've got one minute. Write down as many things. Now this is not a race and this is not a, like you don't, it's, we're not going to say, oh, she's got 30. She's cooler. or She's better. No, no, no. Just write them all down. Go. Okay. So I love what I heard. I love the interaction, and this is the best thing I love about getting adults together, right? When you give adults the opportunity to share, it's just like kids, right? They want to share. People want to talk. And so when you, when you, when you have opportunity for learning, you want to engage people by giving them the opportunity to share. So we'll have more options than that. Now, here's the thing that I want you to think about. I want you to think about the person next to you, not yourself. Because sometimes when we want to share about ourselves, it's harder. I want you to think about something that you heard that you go, oh, I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that. Did somebody hear something that, that made them go, I didn't think about that. Say it out loud. The dogs. The dogs. Got it. Yep. <laughs> Well, what else? Church. Church. Yes. What else? Self. Self. <coughs> Gold star. What did you do? Gold star. <laughs> you told him, you told him one of your responsibilities is yourself. What's your name? I'm Lynn. Uh, Lynn? Lynn? You, we can just go home now because that's the whole presentation. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? Lynn says her number one responsibility is herself. Gold star. Thank you. Thank you. What else? What else did you hear? Thank you for sharing that. What else? Anything else that you heard that came out? Finances. Yes. Now, what words come to mind when you look at your list? What words come to mind? Just be honest. Family. Stress. Thank you. What else? Bills. Thank you. Health, thank you. What else? Parents. Parents, yes. Career. Career. Any other words that come to mind? Exhausting. Friendship, exhausting, yes. <laughs> now, as you look at this list, do you see how this list can give you meaning and purpose? Yeah. Right? And the idea of this class is to, 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 to go down that road so that you look at responsibility from the lens of giving you purpose and meaning as opposed to looking at responsibility from a lens of just, I just have to do it, right? And I'll expound upon that in a minute. Everyone has one of these members in their family, right? Right? Can we all agree, right? Now, can we all agree that there are certain members of our family that choose to take zero responsibility? Yes. 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 Right? Like that even the word is offensive to them. Yes. Like that's my responsibility? Really? Really? Yes. It's your life. You need a job, right? Like what if I told you that if you fight with everybody, you are probably the one with the problem, right? The reality is there are people that flat out choose to say, you know what, responsibility, I, I do not accept it. It's not my responsibility. And we have family members. Now, are there times in our life that we, as productive, everybody in here, you're productive, you're wanting better for yourself, you're wanting better for your family. Are there times where we step away from a responsibility? We do, right? We can step away and just say, you know what? I'm just going to put that under the carpet there. I'll deal with that later. I'll step aside. And... <laughs> This right here, so you lost your job. It was probably your fault, but I, wanna, I don't want to start anything, right? Like, you know, some of those family members that just, they, they, everywhere they go, they just, they can't seem to keep the job. They can't seem to get along with anybody. It's like, at the end of the day, you've got to take responsibility for what's going on in your life. Now, I love this. I love this. And uh, any Simpson fans? Does anybody like the Simpsons? 
Does anybody remember this episode? Like, if you're a Simpson fan, so so uh, Marge is just uh, is is getting on Homer about his responsibility. She, she's like, oh, the kids, the kids, and. And he literally walks in the living room in front of Marge and the family. He has a bottle of mayonnaise and a bottle of vodka. And he pours the vodka into the mayonnaise, shakes it up, and he looks at Marge and he says, that's a problem for future Homer. Throws down this vodka mayonnaise and then passes out. (laughs) Okay? Now there's something key in that that I think is so important. He says... That's a problem for future Homer. And this is the whole point of responsibility. You see, when we take hold of responsibility in the moment, we are saying, hey, future Tomas is going to be rewarded. When we take hold and have purpose and we know what we want to do, we are giving life to future Tomas, to future Tony future self. When we don't take responsibility, we say, well, I hope you figure it out in the future, Tomas, because I don't have time today. And this analogy was brought to me by none other than Jordan Peterson. He talked about this in the lecture. That's a problem for future Homer. And I sat there and I go, this is one of the smartest men in the world that he's talking about Homer Simpson. <laughs> right? And so future you, this is what you need to do. Just in your, in your mind, down at the bottom, you see the little kid running. You see the two people down there, right? You see what you have to say is like, here is you today, but you have to understand future you is counting on you to be responsible. Today. Future you is saying, please, please take responsibility today. Future you is not is saying, okay, look, I know that right now you don't want to think about X or you don't want to think about Y, but look, I'm counting on you. I'm counting on you. But I want you to look at your list because future you doesn't just talk about you. Look at your list. Who else is on your list? Spouse. Your spouse. Kids. Kids. Grandkids. You see, here's the thing. Future you is really everybody connected to you. It's their futures that are tied to your present. And in that moment, we can grab hold of the responsibility so that it gives us purpose, it gives us meaning, and it gives everybody on that list connected to you that ability to thrive and move forward in the future. Now, if you look at those boxes, right, when we talk about this list, we have a responsibility, but I, and think about it in terms of uh, real estate. Every year, what do we wanna do when we start a new year in real estate? We wanna make more money. We set goals, right? We have ideas of, I, I, I wanna go from five million to 10, or I wanna go from seven to 11, or I wanna go from 12 to 15, whatever the case may be, right? But the, there is one responsibility in life that can really add to every other responsibility. And, and it goes back to what my friend Lynn uh-huh. said earlier, right? And that is the responsibility to take care of yourself and grow. Because you have to personally grow. If we, don't, if we don't take that responsibility, and you can just write that down on your list, one of the responsibilities, just grow. Now, do I mean, uh, uh, by, what, what, what do you think I mean by grow? Personally, what do you think I mean by that? Spiritually, physically, Spiritually, physically emotionally. emotionally. How, like, give me some examples of that. How do you do that? Learning. Learn. What? Classes. Right, what else? What are you going to say? Study. Study, yes. Diet, exercise. Diet, exercise, yes. Be open to things. Be open. Just the f- idea of being open is huge, right? And so this, this grow is really interesting, and it made me think, you know, I, I, uh, uh, I'm going to be talking about a book, 
you know, this quote right here, I love this quote. Look at this. It says, change is inevitable. Growth is optional. Right? In your life, you're going to change whether we like, uh, uh, it's going to change whether we like it or not. Right? And, and remember your family members, right? Because <laughs> the ones that don't want to take responsibility for anything because nothing is their fault. Nothing. Right? For them, they don't look at this as, hey, I need to change and I need to grow. They're looking at it. Everything around them is changing and it's not fair. Right? Everything is not fair. But look, we get the option to grow. It's optional whether we want to put ourselves in uncomfortable situations so that we learn and thrive, right? Think about the idea. Anybody gardeners? Anybody like to plant and garden, right? Oh, good. Anybody like have nothing green on their body? No green thumb whatsoever. All right, that's me. I'll tell you a great story of my, of my who, where are the gardeners at? Raise your hand. You'll love this story. So my wife and I decided we're going to grow uh, 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 green peppers in the backyard. So you know that little brown carton they give you, right? And they have all the plantings in there. So we were just like, okay, great. We got our little mulch. We got all over a little soil. We got everything ready. And we just put that carton in the grass and we put the soil all on top of it. We're like, this is awesome. That was easy. All right. So as you can well imagine, what do you think happened? <laughs> this was not productive at all, right? I mean, like, you talk about dumb on dumb, right? But here's the thing. We learned through that experience that we need help, right? We need other people to come help us. Now, growth, right, is going to be optional. Are we going to actually seek out someone that could tell us what to do? Are we going to actually get a book and go, hey, remove the plants from the carton, right? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Or just go to H-E-B and buy it. That's right. That's right. Now, there are traps to growing. There are traps. There are things that stop us from growing. And if you flip over your paper, we're going to go through those traps. There, there are ideas, and these come, uh, these traps come from a book. It's one of my favorite all-time books, The 15 Laws of Growth. Now, I do a mastermind on this book. Does anybody know what a mastermind is? A mastermind is where you get a group of people together and you study something. One person kind of facilitates, doesn't teach, but they facilitate the discussion. And usually it's on a book. Usually a mastermind is on a book or it's on a business idea. It's on real estate. And you get this group of people together. and You say, today we're going to mastermind about listing houses. And then everybody kind of shares their ideas. There's a facilitator kind of getting the discussion going. And then everybody just starts talking, right? That's a mastermind. So I do a mastermind. I've done probably seven or eight masterminds on this book. I've read the book seven or eight times. And I, and I want you to understand something. Every time I read this book, the book, the words change. Isn't that amazing? Now, do the words change? No, you change. No, I changed, right? I'm in a different position. I'm in a different place. And so this book is powerful. And if, if y'all ever want to do something like this, it's an eight-week mastermind, once a week for eight weeks. This is something that will profoundly propel growth profoundly propel growth. Now, here's number one trap. Are you ready? The number one trap that happens for a lot of us is we assume you will grow automatically. Assuming you're just going to automatically grow, right? That's what happens to my body. It doesn't happen to you. <laughs> That's true. Yes, it does. If you, if you feed it and don't do the right things, yes, it does automatically grow. Yes. <laughs> right. But I, let's go back. Every, who's been a realtor for less than five years? Raise your hand. Less than five years. Wow. Okay. Right, the, hands down. Who's been a realtor less than two years? Two years or less? Okay. Awesome. Now, I want you to think about, for everybody here, and, and if you've been a realtor for more than 15 years, raise your hand. Oh, I love this. Okay. We got a good group here. Now, think about this. When you first became a realtor, did you automatically just start, this knowledge just started just... <laughs> Oh, that I need this amendment and this this document. And oh, I knew I knew, you did you know anything? 
We were all clueless, right? If for full disclosure, I, I, most of y'all, I, you may not know this, but I'm an, I'm an agent. Uh, I have my license. I got it in 2009. And so I, I use it to spy on everybody. <laughs> right? I need to know who's got the listings, right? So, but I got my license and I actually practiced real estate from 2009 to 2011, right before we got our magazine. And then after that, we just f did, went full time. But when we, were learn when we were first coming into the business, we had no idea what we were doing. My wife and I were clueless. And there was no automatic growth. It was a uh, 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 sink or swim. I can remember going to my broker and saying, hey, how do I do a listing presentation? And he handed me a packet and he said, just present this. And I remember going, but what do I say? Right? Like, what do I do? I had no clue. Right? And so automatic growth is not possible. You have to be in the first chapter of this book. Chapter number one is the law of intentionality. The first law of the 15 laws is intentionality. Now, when you hear that word, what do you think of? Discipline. Mm. Say that for everybody. Discipline. Discipline. What else? When you hear that word intentionality. Have a purpose of it. Do it. Purpose, right? If you do anything intentional, how many of you have like started a workout regimen, started a, a new diet plan, started a new, anything that you're trying to do new, in order to actually do it, you've got to be intentional. And if you're going to be intentional, then you've got to have a plan because intentional means you actually have a plan. And this is what happened. We got into real estate. We had no plan and we had no intentions. So we were not gonna grow. Growth was gonna be very, very difficult for us when we started in real estate, right? We had to figure out how to be intentional and then start putting in place a plan. Being intentional with your growth means you have a plan. What do you wanna work on? What do you wanna learn? Now, a lot of talk right now in, in real estate is on social media, right? How many of you have had enough of social media? You're like, I, I can't do one more class of social media. <laughs> Right. I get it. I totally get it. Right. And so I know there's an agent in San Antonio, the number one agent in the city. Now, I'm going to this is full disclosure. Uh, uh, Tony, plug your ears. No, full disclosure. I'm just kidding. <laughs> full disclosure. Number one agent in the city. Fifty four million dollars. He's not on social media. OK, he's just not on it now. I'm not saying that that's the route to go. What I'm telling you is that there are outliers. There are people that go outside of the realm of like this universe and you go, he doesn't exist online. He doesn't. It's crazy. I know the guy. I see him all the time. I see him almost every day, every week, three times a week when working out. He doesn't exist online. No social media whatsoever. $54 million last year. And he's on pace to do probably more than that this year. Okay. But, but what I'm saying is, what do you want to learn? How do you want to be intentional with your growth? Now, you know what I always recommend to him? I always recommend, I say, listen, just do one. And I, I watch what happens. Just do one. The problem I think for all agents is you try to learn them all and you get frustrated. Be intentional, learn one, and just stick to that one. That's it. Just be intentional. So don't assume that you'll automatically grow. Now, I put down five ways here to grow. If you really want to be intentional, here are five ways. Number one, just make a list of the ways you want to grow. How do you want to grow? Do you want to be a better negotiator? Do you want to be better at listings? Do you want to be better at open houses? Like, what do you, what do you want to be better at and make that list? Number two is find a book or audio audible book that will help in those areas. Okay. Um, Dave Ramsey fans, any Dave Ramsey fans? Oh God. Very cool. So when Dave Ramsey, when I, when I got a hold of Dave Ramsey, I couldn't get enough of that show. Like I just, I had to hear it and it was like nourishment for my soul Whenever somebody would come on and say, freedom, you know, I am debt free. 
That is something that will help. If you want help in finance, financial area, listen to his show, read his books, right? Find a book, or anybody on Audible already? Anybody on Audible? Okay, I, I, for those of you who are not on Audible, here's what I'll say. The biggest thing that I hear from people is they say, well, I don't have time to read. I, I, I hear that all the time, and I get it. Because if you, when anybody thinks about sitting down to physically read a book, their immediate reaction is, I don't have time to sit and do anything, Tomas, right? And this is what I say to realtors. How often are you just sitting in your car? A lot, right? How often are you driving from Kerrville to Fredericksburg or Fredericksburg to San Antonio or San Antonio coming back to Kerrville? How often are you in your car? You're in your car more than probably a lot of the agents in San Antonio, right? And so where could you find a way to grow? Get a book, do Audible, it's super easy. You could have someone in your class show you how to do it. You buy it on Amazon, it automatically sends it to your phone. It's all connected. Your Amazon account is your Audible account. You just gotta, gotta do a sign in. I get the credits, I get a credit every month, pay $16, I get my book, I have the book forever as long as I keep paying that $16 a month, <laughs> right? Audible is a winner. Big way to win there. Listen to podcasts. Listen to podcasts. There's some great real estate podcasts out there. Tom Ferry. Y'all familiar with Tom Ferry? He's got a great podcast. Listen. To, does everybody know what a podcast is? Oh, good. Who doesn't know? Raise your hand. Thank you. Gold star. Thank you. Because I appreciate that. You know why I appreciate that? Because you're going to grow right now. Thank you. Anytime you don't, if you're like, hey, I'm not, I've never heard of that before, that's a moment where you can grow when you're just open and you say, tell me something. So on your, you have an iPhone? On your iPhone is an app. It looks like a, it, it's got this big, uh, almost like a, a, a microphone. Let me show it to you. And almost all of them have it. It looks like this little radio symbol right there, right? That little symbol is podcasts. There are... Golly, how many podcasts are on there? I mean, hundreds of thousands. But there's a really good one. It's called TM3 Impact. <laughs> Y'all saw what I did right there, right? There's a really good one. I just did a podcast with Josh Altman from Million Dollar Listing. Yes, it was wonderful. You heard it? Gold star. You get two gold stars. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Yeah, I appreciate that. So what a podcast is, it's an audible format where you could just have it playing in your car of a conversation. And it's typically audio. I do audio and video, and I'll have like a video, like a YouTube version of it where it's videotaped, and then I extract the audio, and then I make an, auto, uh, an audio version, and that's what a podcast is. It's an audio conversation. Think of it as a radio station but you're broadcasting it through phones. And it's any, at any moment, it's not live. At any moment, once I download it, you can go to that podcast and then you can listen to it. But it's great information. There are so many amazing podcasts. Most podcasts are rather short. I try to keep mine about 30 to 40 minutes. Some are even shorter. And then you have Joe Rogan, who's on the crazy side. He's like three hours. It is like three hour podcast, right? But here's the thing, a podcast, where could you listen to this? In the car, While right? While you're doing laundry. While you're doing laundry. <laughs> While you're taking care of those other responsibilities, right? While you're cooking, I'll look, sometimes I'll just put one on on my Alexa and I'll have it playing on the Alexa through my phone and while I'm getting dinner ready or while I'm hanging out, right? Uh, but listen to podcasts, it's another way to grow. Find a coach or a mentor. Find a coach or a mentor. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. And then the last one here, if you really, really want to start, like I call this, this is one of those ways where you can, um, you know, when night, remember, remember nitrous in cars, right? You, 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 it, do people still do that? Is that still a thing? Yeah. It is? I, I have no clue. I just think of the Tesla, right? You don't need nitrous in a Tesla. But, but uh, if you really want to like turbocharge your growth, start a journal, okay? 
And what do I mean by that? A journal could be, it, it could be notes for work. It could be ideas you have. I like to buy these journals because I have a table of contents. The pages are numbered. And I literally will write whatever page, I'll write those notes on my table of contents. I've probably shared this a million times, I apologize, but I think it's huge. Because what happens when you have everything in one place, you don't lose those posty notes. And as realtors, we're notorious for the posty note or the scrap of paper or hold on, I need something. And you write on the back of a, an envelope. But if you have one journal, where everything goes. I'm talking your thoughts. I'm talking your gratitude, what you appreciate, your deep, deep thoughts, things that you want to put in here. You have it all in one place and you have a table of contents to go back and find it. This will supercharge your growth. What about a mistake? Yes, ma'am. I think that idea alone can solve so many problems in our lives and our business because I do have, I have one or two of these, yeah. I have three or four of those, I have spiral notebooks. Having all of a consistent way and the table of contents is brilliant. Yeah. And it's so simple. It's simple. It's very simple. By the way, this is at Target, or as my wife calls it, Target, right? Target, 17 bucks. You can go online and get them. It's called At a Glance. But, but what I love is that I was buying journals and numbering the pages. 70 bucks, you know? That's yeah. Why should I have to spend 70 bucks for a book? Yeah, yeah. But this one, the pages are already numbered and it comes with a table of contents. Now again, this will take intentionality. Whoa, it'll take planning. Because you always have to have it with you. You walk into a listing appointment, boom. You're already prepared with the questions. You already know what you want to know. And you're talking them through it and then you're writing down their answers. So then when they say, hey, Tomas, you said this, and you pull out your notes, you say, well, actually, um, hold on, let me go to my table of contents. Oh yeah, 54. F Listen, here are notes. I have all the notes written down right here from our meeting. It can save you in times of like really serious stress. All right, number two. And uh, I think I'm running out of time, so let me get through this. Number two. Oh, good? We're good on time? Okay. Number two, I don't know how to grow. Have you ever felt this way? Can I admit that I felt this way? When I was going through a period of running, um, in 2016, I, I started boxing and I needed to, to increase my cardio. And I decided that I needed to, well, I didn't decide. I, I, there, was, there was a young lady in the gym and she's like, you don't run? And like, like almost she was offended by it, like that I didn't run, you know? And I said, no, no, running is stupid. You don't understand. Like I just, jogging is so dumb to me. I, I don't feel like it, there's no purpose. And she looked at me and she goes, I challenge you to run three miles tomorrow. And I looked at her and I'm like, huh, no. And I got up the next morning and all I could see was her face challenging me to run three miles. And that was 2016. I ran three miles, hated every step, hated every step. Fast forward to 2019, I've run several half marathons, I've run a full marathon, and this month I have 47 miles in June. What's the date? What's the date today? The 12th. So by the 12th, I have 47 miles for this month already. Here's the thing. I didn't know how to do this, but I just started finding people around me that were doing it, and I started figuring it out little by little. And then once you get intentional, things just start to change. Now don't ask me my marathon time, it wasn't that great. All right, now, begin with the end in mind. When it comes to, like, I don't know how to grow, see, what I had to do is think in terms of, okay, what do I want to happen from all this running? What is, what is the end result that I'm yearning for? The end result was I just wanted to get up and run and not feel like I was dying. <laughs> That's all I wanted. I just wanted to get up and run and then at the end of it, didn't feel like I was gonna fall over and pass out. And that's all I kept thinking about. And then it got to the point where it's like, well, if I can do three miles, maybe I could do six. 
right? And so I started thinking about the end of mine. Okay, if I'm going to run six miles, okay, how fast am I going to have to run? My pace may have to slow down a little bit. And then, so little by little, when you begin with the end in mind, when you begin to think about what you want, you can start to slowly go back and figure out how to grow to that point. Y'all follow me? Does that make sense? So you're not going to automatically grow. And even if you don't know how, if you begin with the end in mind, you can start laying out the intention of what it is that you want to do, right? Number three, it's not the right time to begin, right? Have we ever felt that? Have we ever felt like, you know what? It's Saturday. I'm starting my diet on Monday. I'm going to be good. I'm going to be really good on Monday. Anybody ever said that? Anybody? <laughs> I've said that. I'm going to be really good on Monday, but Saturday and Sunday, is, yeah, we're, going, we're going to have fun, right? We're going to have a lot of fun on Saturday and Sunday, right? Here's the thing about not the right time to begin. Have you ever heard the quote about the tree? You know when the best time to plant a tree is? No. 20 years ago. <laughs> right? Right? The next best time? Right now. Right? So the, the best time to ever plant a tree was 20 years ago. I'm looking at my tree in the front yard. Every time I come home, this tree, it was, it was, a, it was a, one of those uh, like little bitty trees that the builder puts in the front. And I mean, that tree was about a little bit taller than me. That tree is now taller than my house. I've been there 10 years. And every time I look at that tree, I just go, wow, it's amazing. Any of y'all have trees like that? Right? You know what I'm talking about, right? But here's the thing. Beginning, this idea of beginning. A year from now, you may wish you had started today. One year from now, you're going to be thinking about Tomas and responsibility and Homer and mayonnaise, right? <laughs> and you're going to be kicking yourself. Your future self is going to be kicking you, saying you should have started. You should have started it. Come on. Let's get it going. Do it now, right? The best time to start, whatever you want to do, is start now. Begin. Start the process. Don't worry if you don't have it all figured out, right? Les Brown, one of my all-time favorite, favorite speakers. Love Les Brown. Les Brown has a quote. He says, the how is none of your business. The how is none of your business. You know, you get an idea, you want to change, and you're like, oh, how do I do it? No, no, it's none of your business. Just start. Just start moving in that direction. It's the best thing we could ever do. Have you ever looked at a project in your house? Any of y'all ever have those projects where you're like, good, I, you, just closed the, you just closed the door. Just walk away, close the door, right? And, and, and then when you finally get to that point where you want to begin, you open it up, and you're like, no, 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 nope, let me walk back out, I'm up. Not today, not today. Here's the thing. How many of you have been in this situation when you finally mentally make the decision, you open the door and you just start? What happens? Number one, those endorphins kick in, right? Right? That motivation kicks in. And within 10 minutes, you've done more in that room in 10 years, right? Like in 10 minutes. <laughs> and then you realize it really wasn't that bad. You had made it bigger in your mind. And that's the thing that we do with a lot of the stuff that we look at. We make it so big, it's so hard, it's so crazy. But if we had just started now, it really wouldn't be as big or as scary as we really thought, right? The best time to start was yesterday. The next best time is now. Anything you want to do, it's better. it would have been better to start yesterday. But listen, the next best time, just start now. You can do it. Think about what it is that you want and go for it. Because think about it, everybody on that list, remember your responsibility, flip it back over, look at it, everybody on that list is counting on future you. Everybody on that list is counting on future you. Number four, I'm afraid to make a mistake. Anybody here afraid to make mistakes? All right, now let's be real honest, right? We'll, we'll just have a moment of uh, truth here. Now this is a family, right? You know what happens when we're in a family, right? We keep it in the room. Right. It's, it's, this is a safe zone. This is a safe zone. Right. How many have made like I'm talking big mistake in real estate, like cost you money. Thank you. Thank you. Look, whoa, whoa. I see a lot of hands up. Can we do this? Cost you a lot of money. Raise your hand. You made a mistake. Thank you for raising your hand. Here's the deal. 
Are we going to make mistakes in real estate? Everybody in this room, at some point, if you have it, you will, and you'll remember it. Because it may hit your pocketbook, (laughs) right? It may hit your bank account. But I want you to think about this. Every one of those mistakes, if if we went through the room and we just said, okay, let's talk about these mistakes, let's talk about these mistakes, which could be a great mastermind, right? Of all the mistakes that have been made in the room collectively, and then we learned from them. I'll never forget I was doing a mastermind, and in this particular mastermind, it was with a title company. And one of the things that came up in this mastermind was a, a young lady who was responsible for a massive fraud and it got through and we're talking $180,000 fraud situation, right? Like I'm, I'm sitting there and going, whoa, right? But here's the thing, what ended up happening out of all of that, everybody on that team really quickly figured out these are the signs to look for. Do you think title companies watch this? They're they're watching this like a hawk all the time. But this one thing slipped through the crack and it was able to work its way through and that money disappeared. Gone. Right? The reality is mistakes can happen. The the truth is, how do you respond? Because you're going to make a mistake. Perfection is not the game. Perfection is not the game. Now, we, we, you know, doctors, we, you better be perfect, right? <laughs> we want them to be perfect. But again, even in their mistakes, they learn and they figure out what works, what doesn't work. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. You got to get back up off the mat, right? I've had a lot of intense mistakes that we've made with Luxury Home Magazine. But you got to peel yourself up off the mat. You got to keep stepping forward and then take the responsibility when you do mess up, right? Because there's a lot of times where people, they they just don't want to take responsibility. They say, you know what? It's not my fault. And they want to blame other people. You'll never learn when that happens. Take responsibility. Number five, I have to find the best way before I start. Like, hey, who, the five-step program, does anybody have the five-step program to change? <laughs> right? Is there a five-step program that will help you change? Probably. Someone's selling it on the internet. I guarantee you. Look that up, right? Somebody's selling it. But here's the thing. There is no perfect way. Everybody in here is unique. Everybody in here has their own story. Everybody in here has their own opportunities and things that are in front of them. So the best way to start really is whatever way you decide. As long as you decide to start, that's the best way. Don't worry about it. You don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. I have this in my office and it's my son with a golf club at Top Golf. Any of y'all been to Top Golf? Right? So my son is at Top Golf and he's looking at me and I took this picture and along the picture is this quote. Because for my son, it was very frustrating swinging a golf club. He was four in that picture, right? Ever seen a four-year-old swing a golf club, right? It's, it's, it's pretty, stand back, exactly right. Guard everything, right? But see, have you noticed, like my son, he would, up until the age of about seven, if those of you who have kids, up until about seven or eight, they're willing to try and start anything. And then there comes a point where they don't want to try. And this scares me. There comes a point where they don't want to try because they feel like they should already be good at it. And they've never done it. But guess what? This translates to us. As adults, we feel like we should still be good at everything. And that's not the case. There's going to be things that you're not good at. And that's where you step in and ask for help and understand you have to get started so that you can be great. Number six, I don't feel like it. Oh, here we go. I don't feel like it. It's a trap, right? I've been there. I've done it. Uh, We have a goal. There's a group of guys and our goal is 100 miles for the month of June, right? So so, so, uh, I woke up on Sunday and I did not want to run. 
We had run 10 miles on Saturday in the heat. It was hot as all get out. If you know Saturday, how, how bad it was. On Sunday, I was like, I am, I'm not running. I don't want to run. But all I kept thinking about is one of those guys is running. And he's going to get ahead of me. And I can't let that happen. Right? Because I had a goal. I had an idea. So the I don't feel like it, you need something bigger that's calling you so that you can turn I don't feel like it into I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. And what is that? It's your list on the other side of that paper. It's your family. It's your grandkids. It's your children. It's future you in the future saying, I'm so glad you started doing that, Tomas. I'm so glad, Lynn, you started working on that. I don't feel like it. Turn that around. Feelings are fleeting. Fight through your feelings and grow. Fight through it. You ever have a client that drives you crazy? Anybody have clients? Never. <laughs> right? Yeah, have you ever had that feeling when the client calls and you're like, oh, 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 I don't want to talk to this client? Because you know they're going to, why am I not getting showings? What is going on? What are you doing? You don't know anything, right? It's, it's going to be something negative, right? But the thing is, is that the, the, you got to fight through those feelings, grab that call and fight through it so that you can deal with it. Because the quicker you deal with issues as a realtor taking responsibility, the quicker you can move them off of your back, right? And the more you ignore it, the bigger that fire grows. We've all been there. I've been there. Trust me. Number seven, others are better than me. And this is probably one of the biggest traps that I see for real estate agents, right? Is you're constantly looking, oh, they did 10 million. How did they do that? They did 12. I can't. What? It's not fair. <laughs> In real estate, which all comes down to numbers, doesn't it? It's a lot, we're, there's a lot of comparison going on, right? But here's the thing. It's not about others being better than you. It's are you being better today? Are you being better today? Are you taking responsibility today so that future self high fives you, right? Others are better than me. This is so critical. Don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle. This is, when I heard this, I was like, okay, goosebumps. All right, Tomas, come on. You cannot compare my beginning in speaking with John Maxwell's middle. There's no comparison. Les Brown. I can't compare my beginning to Les Brown's middle. It's not even close. And the comparison is not fair for either of us. It's not fair for him to compare and go, yeah, you suck. Or for me to go, oh, you're so awesome. That's not fair. We're in two different places. And so as real estate agents, understand that you may be in the beginning or you may be in the middle and the comparison is the thief of joy. Mark Twain. Comparison will steal the joy right out from your body. Just snatch it. And the next thing you know, you're like, you know, Two wine glasses deep. I don't know. Maybe it's bourbon. I don't know. But the idea... What was that? <laughs> did he, did he say like, who said lightweight? Is he said lightweight? Two bottles. Two bottles deep. Hey, listen. I was just measuring the room, all right? I was measuring the room. I forgot I was in the, the hill country, wine country. <laughs> All right, number eight. I love this one. Last one. We're going to wrap up. Last one. Last one, number eight. I thought it would be easier. Growing, right? Learning and growing as a person. There are times where I've thought to myself, this was a trap where I go, well, shouldn't it be easier? If I'm being intentional, if I have a plan, it should be easier, darn it. But that's a trap. Listen, growth was never meant to be easy. Think about plants. You bury the seed. It has to be buried. It has to sit in there and figure out and do whatever, whatever it does. I'm not, I'm not a, you know, a gardener. And then all of a sudden, it starts to germinate and sprout, and then it breaks through the soil. 
But can you imagine being the seed buried under the ground? Like, really? This is what I, what, what? <laughs> I don't want to be in here. But that's exactly where they're supposed to be. And see, when you really want to grow, you'll get uncomfortable and you'll put yourself in a position to where you go, you know what, it wasn't meant to be easy, right? Growth takes effort and pain does bring gain, right? If you've ever done any weightlifting, any push-ups, anything like that, have y'all heard of Murph? Any of y'all, any of y'all heard of Murph? Have you heard of it? So, so, so my dad is a CrossFit junkie. He's 64 years old, okay? And he is a, he's, 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 yeah, he drank the Kool-Aid hardcore. Anybody here in CrossFit? Does anybody do CrossFit? Okay, so the Murph is a one mile run. You're supposed to wear a 20 pound vest. I opted out of the vest. Thank you very much. <laughs> one mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 air squats. Oh, and then at the end, you got to run another mile. It was pure torture so hard. But do you know why they do it? Do y'all know the story of why they do it? <laughs> Lieutenant Murphy, right? Michael P. Murphy, right? That died. This was a workout that they created to honor him on Memorial Day. And they only do it on Memorial Day. And I, I didn't know. I had no clue, right? But let me tell you, it was painful. <laughs> I was sore for five days. I, don't, I can't remember the last time I've been ever sore for that long from one workout. It was, I mean, but the gain and the knowledge of learning why people do that was powerful. What I gained from that and seeing and remembering was powerful. Growth takes effort. It's not meant to be easy. It's not meant to be easy. Now, you remember this? YOLO! Remember I told you at the end of this, we're going to do what with this? What are we going to do with this? We're going to turn it around. And here's how we turn it around. Look at your, go back to your list of responsibilities. <clears throat> and I want you right next to it to write YOLO. Just write those initials. Write those initials. YOLO, right next to it. Here's, here's the landing. We'll bring it down for a landing, and I ho hopefully this kind of brings it full circle. Remember I told you responsibility is the pathway to meaning. Because when you look at your list, that is what gives you meaning and purpose. That's what gets you out of bed. It's not the bills, but it's the three things you circled. And I guarantee you, for everybody, almost everybody in this room, family is in there, isn't it? Is that one of them? Right. So here's the thing, look at this differently. You only live once. Grab hold of the responsibility that's before you and allow it to give you purpose and meaning. Allow it to give you fuel so that when you have those bad days, you look back and go, Tomas, you only live one step into your greatness and make something happen. Responsibility is the pathway to meaning. So if you want to stay in touch, there's a few ways to stay in touch. Uh, you have our, my YouTube channel, my podcast, but at the end of the day, I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back in August. And I'm... Thankful for the opportunity to be with you today. Thank you so much.